This is Matthew Cratter from Trader University, and today I want to answer the question, is there a Bitcoin miner death spiral coming soon? And if you don't know what a death spiral, spiral is when it comes to Bitcoin mining, I will explain that in this video. This video was prompted by a comment by Shiba, and it goes like this. I have a nice new name for your channel, FUD University. Bitcoin has no future. Wait for the next halving. All miners will abandon mining and run towards proof of stake coins. That's because energy cost of running the Bitcoin network will be way higher than what they will earn in rewards. And I was a little disappointed by this comment because he forgot to add that Bitcoin also boils the oceans and is also only used by drug dealers and terrorists. But I'm going to forgive him this one time and answer his question. In order to answer this question, though, we have to ask what it exactly is it that Bitcoin miners actually do. What they do is they use their hardware, their computers, which are called ASICs, highly specialized computers that can only do one thing, which is mine Bitcoin. They use these computers to try to guess a number that starts with a certain number of zeros. And if they're the first computer or the first miner to guess it, they get to create the next block, package up all the transactions, and add the block to the blockchain, and then collect the 6.25 Bitcoin reward plus any transaction fees. So how many guesses do Bitcoin miners make every second when they're trying to guess this special number? Well, if we take a look at the hash rate for the Bitcoin network over the past 90 days, the average hash rate has been 207.8 exahashes. Now that is equal to one exahash is a quintillion hashes every second. So the Bitcoin network is currently guessing these computers on the Bitcoin network are currently making 207, 208 quintillion guesses or hashes every single second. This really boggles the mind since it's very hard to even imagine what a billion is, much less a, qu a trillion or a, qu or a quadrillion or a quintillion. These are very, very large numbers. So this is what Bitcoin miners do. They burn electricity in the effort to try to guess this special number that has a certain number of zeros. Now, what is a Bitcoin miner death spiral? We can see here that this is something that gets a lot of press. There was an article here from July 8th of 2022, and you get articles like this almost every year. Here's a similar article from 2019. Here's a similar article from 2018. You could probably find multiple articles if you did a little bit more digging than I did. So Bitcoin miner death spiral is something like this. Either the price of Bitcoin falls a lot, as we've seen, and or the cost of electricity for Bitcoin mining machines goes up. And when the spread between these gets too small or becomes negative, it becomes unprofitable for someone like me to mine Bitcoin. So what do I do? I turn off my Bitcoin mining machines. I turn off these ASICs since otherwise I'm just running up electricity bills that I won't be able to pay for by selling Bitcoin for fiat because I won't be collecting that 6.25 Bitcoin plus transaction fee minor reward. So what happens here? As more people like me unplug our ASICs because they're no longer making any money, what happens to the overall computing power or the hash rate of the Bitcoin network is it falls as more and more miners unplug their machines and stop mining. As the hash rate falls or the computing power of the network falls, the security of the network gets a little bit weaker as well. A less secure network implies, the, at least theoretically, a lower value for Bitcoin since the network is less secure. And this would lead the price of Bitcoin to fall even more, which makes even more Bitcoin miners unprofitable. So they unplug as well. And then you end up with this sort of spiral dynamics where things uh, enter a vicious circle and get worse and worse. Another version of the death spiral is something like this. Global energy costs skyrocket because of Putin or China or some war, etc. And it's no longer possible, at least this is the claim, it becomes no longer possible to mine Bitcoin because elect electricity becomes just too expensive. So what are the flaws in these Bitcoin mining death spiral arguments. The first flaw in this argument is basically assuming that every Bitcoin miner has the same energy input costs, the same electricity costs. So for example, what if I'm running my Bitcoin miner using my own solar panels, my own wind turbines, my own hydroelectric source? In many cases, my marginal cost of electricity could be basically zero if you don't take into account the sort of the non-cash expense of equipment depreciation, which of course equipment eventually needs to be replaced, but at least the variable costs or the marginal costs 
could be basically zero, especially if you're using renewables like this and you're, you're off grid as well. So if I'm running a Bitcoin miner high in the mountains of Colorado, where there's lots of sunshine, even at the high altitudes, and maybe even some seasonal hydroelectric potential during the, the spring and early summer melt, do I really care about what's happening between Putin and Europe or what's happening in China or what's happening elsewhere in the US, what's happening in Washington DC, for example, I don't really care. And it turns out there are lots of isolated places in the world. All you need is a dial-up internet connection at best. You could actually even connect directly to the Blockstream satellite as well. And now we have things like Starlink as well, which make it even easier to have a good internet connection in a remote area. And you don't even need a, a, that great of an internet connection in order to be a Bitcoin miner. You just be able, need to be able to send some data. So that's the first flaw in the Bitcoin miner death spiral argument. The second flaw is a much more important one. And this is simply the fact that a lot of people don't really understand how the Bitcoin network works and they haven't even heard about Bitcoin's difficulty adjustment. So the difficulty adjustment is something that automatically takes place every 2016 blocks which is approximately every two weeks. A block comes out every 10 minutes on average. So if you add that up or multiply that by 216, you'll end up with approximately every two weeks. Now, one goal of the difficulty adjustment in Bitcoin is to keep new blocks being created every 10 minutes on average. This serves a couple of purposes. First of all, this helps to keep the rate of money issuance, the issuance of new Bitcoin, as the Coinbase reward of each Bitcoin block, it helps to keep this rate of money issuance fairly constant so that all the Bitcoin aren't mined in one month by overloading the network with supercomputers. So theoretically, you could hook up some really powerful ASICs to the Bitcoin network and try to just extract all the coins in a very, very short period of time. But the difficulty adjustment makes this not possible. So this is how it works. If in the past 2016 blocks, if they came in, let's say at about 11 minutes on average, the difficulty then will adjust for the next 2016 blocks. And in this case, the difficulty will go down because the blocks are coming in a little bit too slow on average. They should be coming in every 10 minutes. Instead, they're coming, coming in every 11 minutes. And so that the difficulty required for these ASICs to guess the magic number will go down. In other words, what, what actually happens is they'll be searching a much, a much smaller space for this number rather than a larger space. And we can talk about more about that in another video. Difficulty required to guess the magic number will go down, and this will make it easier, in other words, faster and cheaper for miners to find the next block. If they can find it faster, that means they don't have to burn as much electricity, which means that they will be more profitable than if they had to spend more time searching for that magic number. So that's what happens to the difficulty adjustment if the blocks come in too slowly. But if the blocks come in too quickly, let's say the past 2016 blocks that were mined on the Bitcoin network, let's say they came in at nine minutes on average, then the difficulty requirement will ratchet up. And the difficulty required to guess the magic number, you'll have to search a much larger space and the number will have to have more zeros in front of it, making it much more difficult or slower for miners to find the next block. And by making it more difficult and slower, it means that they will, they will need to spend more money and more energy on electricity to try, to try to guess the magic number. So what happens in reality when miners unplug because the mining has become unprofitable for them? Do we get a miner death spiral? Do all the Bitcoin miners all around the world quit and stop securing the network? No, this never happens, and it doesn't happen for a very good reason. When the miners unplug, the hash rate of the network falls. In other words, there are fewer ASICs, there are fewer computers contributing to the hashing power of the network. A lower hash rate means that blocks will start to come in at an average time more than 10 minutes. In other words, block production or block mining time will increase. Then you will have the difficulty adjustment kick in after 2016 blocks. The network will see that the blocks are coming in too slowly and that it has become too difficult to guess a number that qualifies as the magic number that has enough zeros at the beginning. So what will happen is the difficulty will ratchet downwards. You have this adjustment every 2016 blocks, and this will make it easier to guess the magic number. And Bitcoin miners who have not unplugged, those who have stuck around will find it easier and cheaper to mine new blocks. 
easier means more profitable because you don't have to burn as much electricity as we said while searching for the magic number. So when you shut down your miner because you're unprofitable, maybe you have a very expensive warehouse and you have too many people working for you and you have to pay all these salaries and all this overhead, whereas I'm a really lean and mean operation, it's just me mining at 10,000 feet in Colorado. When you shut down your miner and unplug, it makes my miner more profitable. So I will stick around and keep mining. Basically, there'll be fewer, there'll be less competition because there'll be fewer computers competing on the network. So why are miners incentivized to stick around for 2016 blocks or approximately two weeks? Well, they're incentivized to do this because most of them have entered into long-term power contracts. They've leased or bought warehouse space. They've set up these operations. And at minimum, they've spent thousands of dollars, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of dollars on computer equipment on ASICs. And these ASICs can only be used to do one thing, to mine Bitcoin. They're very, they're application specific integrated circuits. That's what I believe ASICs stands for. They can only mine Bitcoin. And so once you've bought these Bitcoin miners, you can try to dump, dump them on the market. You might not get a very good price for them, especially now. So it makes a lot of sense, especially if you become a Bitcoin miner and you go to all this trouble, you're not just gonna shut down your factory, your whole operation, just because you've had a couple bad weeks. Instead, you're going to stick around for the difficulty adjustment and try to stick it out. And if you can, you are guaranteed to be much more profitable than before. So those who are able to stick around end up doing well, while those who un who unplug ensure that those who stick around are profitable. In a sense, you can think about these Bitcoin mining operations as having staked their ASICs. Basically, they've tied up their capital in this hardware, and this allows them to have a little longer time horizons and to stick around through good times and bad if possible. But it is a very competitive business. If you don't have the right cost structure, if you're running a very sloppy operation, you will be outcompeted. Of course, under proof of stake, there is no real competition. You just sit on your coins like Scrooge and you get richer and richer. But Bitcoin is a free market. Bitcoin mining is a free market. It's extremely industrialized, extremely competitive. So the next question should be, has this minor death spiral ever been stress tested in real time? It seems like it works well in theory, but has it ever been stress tested in real time? Well, as many of you know who were around last summer, in the summer of 2021, the Bitcoin network was hugely stress tested. The Bitcoin network lost an astonishing 54, approximately 54% of its hash rate. In other words, more than half of all Bitcoin miners in the world unplugged in just a couple of days, and most of these were obviously in China. You can imagine what would happen to Google or Facebook or Netflix if they had to shut down 54% of their servers very quickly. How long would it take for them to restore service? Now, when Bitcoin did this, when it was banned by the Chinese government, what happened is everyone in China, or a lot of people, most of the miners unplugged their machines, tried to move it to neighboring countries. Some of the machines ended up in the US. And what happened is there was a, there were actually a couple difficulty adjustments. This article talks about a 28% downwards difficulty adjustment. And what happened is the Bitcoin network kept working beautifully. That the blocks, the blocks were delayed at first until we got the difficulty adjustment. Some blocks took 20 minutes, even 25 minutes. But once those difficulty adjustments kicked in, the Bitcoin network did not miss a beat. Again, it kept producing blocks this whole time. And this was a huge, huge stress test where a major country banned Bitcoin mining. And what happened? Bitcoin was completely fine because it is resistant to nation state attacks as Satoshi designed it to be. So this really was a real-time stress test of the Bitcoin mining network, and it came through looking, it came through really with, with flying colors. We can see the hash rate of the network plummeted in the summer of 2021, plummeted from, these are 30-day averages, but roughly plummeted from 164, 165 million terahashes. This isn't in, in exahashes, this is in terahashes, but went from somewhere around 164, 165 million terahashes all the way down to 95, 96 terahashes. And then just a few months later, really, if the bottom was in July, by about the end of the year, so about six months later, five, six months later, it had recovered, the hash rate had recovered to its previous highs and went on to make new all-time highs. This is how robust, this is how unstoppable 
the Bitcoin mining network is. So I want you to remember this video and maybe share this video with some friends if you ever hear people saying this sort of FUD. If Bitcoin drops to $10,000, if Putin doesn't turn the gas pipeline back on for Germany or Poland or whatever, if global energy costs keep going up, if Bitcoin goes through with the 2024 halving where the minor reward gets, gets cut in half, then if any of these things happen, and this is of course FUD, which you'll hear, all the Bitcoin miners are no longer going to be able to afford to mine Bitcoin and Bitcoin will be dead. Well, this is not what's going to happen. And anyone who understands what happened with China, anyone who understands the difficulty adjustment and Satoshi's genius in putting this in there will understand that none of these things can kill Bitcoin. As I'm recording this, it's 2022. Bitcoin has been around for, call it uh, 13 years. And I think at this point, it really would be amazing if Bitcoin critics took even a little time to learn about Bitcoin and the protocol and how it actually works before writing stuff like this and spreading FUD like this. And what they don't understand, if they don't understand the difficulty adjustment, they don't understand that Bitcoin could literally, literally drop to a dollar a coin and it would still be profitable to mine. At that point, at that price point, people would probably be mining Bitcoin using CPUs or GPUs rather than ASICs. The network would be less secure simply because you'd be having, you wouldn't be having this high powered equipment securing it, but it would still be fine. It's very unlikely, of course, that Bitcoin will ever get down this low, but at least theoretically, you could have Bitcoin fall in price, miners would unplug, the difficulty adjustment would ratchet down, and it would be possible to mine Bitcoin using weaker machines, using CPUs or GPUs. The thing that bothers me about a lot of Bitcoin critics, I'm always open to genuine questions. There's no such thing as a dumb question. And people who actually have intellectual curiosity and want to ask a question in intellectual uh, humility, that, that is one thing. But the problem is there are a lot of people, and even on my channel, people who want to criticize Bitcoin who really want it to die. So I would say to these critics, you can cry harder, cry harder and keep trying to propagate the current corrupt fiat system or trying to shell one of your altcoins. We know that a lot of you who bring up this death spiral, you actually want to see a Bitcoin miner death spiral, but unfortunately you are not going to get one. China couldn't kill Bitcoin and certainly you cannot kill Bitcoin. Turns out everyone gets their Bitcoin at a price that they deserve. And these kind of critics will probably not be buying Bitcoin or at least having it bought for them in their retirement accounts or their pension accounts until Bitcoin is trading in the millions of dollars. And this is one of the nice things about the new coming Bitcoin era. In this new era, ignorant, lazy fudsters, fiat economists, central bankers, dumb politicians, and bad journalists get poorer and poorer every Bitcoin cycle. While Bitcoiners who are willing to put in the difficult work to actually understand Bitcoin, how the protocol works, and by understanding it, derive the strength to hodl it, these Bitcoiners continue to gain money. Of course, Bitcoin is money. They continue, continue to increase their purchasing power, their net worth, and their power in general, and their political influence. It's actually quite astonishing when you think about it, how many people are motivated to kill Bitcoin from governments to bankers, etc. And yet they still haven't been able to kill it after all these years. Mean, meanwhile, Bitcoin keep, keeps getting more and more powerful. The hash rate, even with the drawdown in price in 2022, the hash rate is still hovering well, well above where it was last year, even at the peak before China banned Bitcoin. So Bitcoin's not going anywhere. Bitcoin's critics though, as every year goes by, continue to look or begin to look even more stupid and ignorant. And at a certain point, uh, there's nothing we can do to help people who don't want to put in the hard work, who make pronouncements uh, without doing the proper research. If you found this video helpful, be sure to hit that subscribe and like button. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks all for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.